Hello, how are you going? Ian Applis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. Today I want to paint a beautiful dawn, dusty setting, tropical kind of scene with the sun poking right through the middle. Something that's going to give it beautiful impact like that. It's going to be fantastic when it's on your wall. Sizes there, 12 by 16 inch. And I will also have those colours going up the screen. There you go, look at that, love it. These are designed for you to watch a couple of times, set yourself up with the colours and everything, whatever size canvas you want, and play and pause and paint along with me. And if you feel you can't do it, just give yourself a bit of practice and then you can do it. All right, let's get right over here. Now down on the palette, I've got some soft white, just titanium white, it's a real soft bodied one. And I've got some retarder there. Not too much, because I just want to be able to blend the two sky colours together, so I don't really need an overly lot of that. And I want to just get my putter on a brush and mix the living buggery out of that, and that way there'll be no surprises inside there. And I want to get the sky half of the painting done. So I've got a bit of a horizon line here, I think you might see, and then I've got some trees and stuff on top of that, so the sky is from there upwards. I'll get all this pushed on just to that tops of those trees there that I was talking about. Crisscross it all the way into your canvas. Now when you're doing this part, don't worry about the brush strokes because we iron them out later on. Just want to, the main purpose is to push it all over the place. And I want to thank Alexander Schmeck for this picture on Unsplash. Now I'm going to stroke it left and right, just like a pure gentleman, get it nice and even coat of that white on the canvas. Now down here I've got some red gold and I want to keep adding some blue until I'm happy with that brown flavour that I'm getting. I'm going for kind of a jaspery colour and I just want to get this for the bottom half of the orange sky where it's a bit darker okay and the white on the board is going to lighten it up as well so I want to come from the bottom and bring this up there we go bring it up to roughly where I want it to fade beautiful different colors this crisscross it in where it's not getting everywhere now I'm going to the tip of the brush and I'm stroking it getting it nicely evenly brushed across the canvas and that's pretty much the color i wanted oh yay he said ray yes i'm happy now we're going to get our red gold in there now i've cleaned my putter on a brush and i'm loading up my red gold for the top half of the sky now i want it nice and orangey up the top and this is going to come down and slowly blend with that jaspery color that i made look at that beautiful get it there get it there Keep in your orange before you go down to the brownie colour. We'll call it a brownie colour because it is. It's brownie looking, isn't it? Now I'm going to see how there's a bit of a band there like that. I want to get to there and kind of crisscross it, disturb that line and make it a nature-fied joining of the two colours. And I've got a beautiful transition of the two colours that have been happening right before our eyes. All right, I've got a couple of pounces. If you don't have these things, go to your craft store, hobby stores, things like that, and look for them. Different places around the world have different names for them. Stampers, stipplers, pounces, whatever. It's a foam sponge on a stick. I want to use this bigger one to get the glare, and I want to use this other one here, as you can see, to get the size of me sun in the sky. So I just want to simply prime it up with some of this craft white just like that just so it's not so wanting and i'm going to pick up the red gold like that now my canvas is wet i'm going to have a tree here and there so i want this situation happening right here boom nothing's happening <clears throat> i've got to get more there we go and I've pretty much got myself a um, orange glare. There we go. Calm down. I was a bit worried then. Oh, no, it's not working, but it worked. Now, I'm turning my sponge as I'm doing this. I'm not just doing it in a mechanical way. You want bits of your art to be arty. There we go. We've got a soft, general red-gold glare right there, okay? 
Now I was going to use this smaller pouncer here, but it makes the glare too big. So I'm going to use the same pouncer because I want the yellow pretty much hogging all that with just that glare just on the edge. So I've got your basic cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow medium to be exact. I've cleaned that sponge. I'll give it a bit of a wet and I want to get this color onto the pouncer. Now the canvas is wet. I'm going to see if I need to dry it or not. Now I'm feeling I might have to put this one on and then dry it, but I just want to try. So we're right, right in the guts of that. I'm going to pull it off, but normally I'll give it a bit of a twist. There's our yellow. I will dry that now. I'm picking up more of the cadmium yellow because this needs to be more yellow, believe it or not. You want the edge of it nice and sharp. Beautiful. I'm just getting it to the edge and giving it some twists because the surface of this is convexed and it doesn't get right to the edge properly. So you see what I'm done there? And I want to get a bit of white in there now. So I'm grabbing some titanium white out of the tube, not this soft white. I want the thick structured titanium white. And I'm just grabbing it on a little flat brush, just something I can control. And I'm gonna grab Malcolm, my mouse stick, and I wanna get some of this white. Let's put that up there for now. And I wanna grab a bit of um, intensity around this corner here. I'm just stamping it on because if I brush it, it's going to grind into that wet yellow and I can dry it later if I feel I need to get it a bit dry. And I pretty much want a nice white intense glare here. And see, I'm slowly blending it into that yellow and then I'll dry it and get the, so it's just not a big white blob on there. I don't want it to be a big white blob. I'm going to give it a dry and you know what when I dry it I'm just going to dry it semi dry so it's a bit rubbery. Okay picking up some more white again. There we go. Now you can see after I've given it a bit of a dry it's not washing all this into the yellow as much. Now if it's not dry enough I will just simply have to stop again dry it a little bit more just so as I can get this white glare enough within this sun here and just simply finishing it off so it's not see how it's not a white blob it's got gradient gradual f gradually fading from the white into the yellow there to be quite honest i've just put a little bit of um yellow on my brush finding some of these dull spots and where the, i looked in the monitor the, some of the white was a bit too bright, so I'm just sitting it back down with some of that yellow. So now we've pretty much got the sky, two colours in, and our sun. Now down the bottom here, I've got the horizon line, which is here. I've got the foreground trees, shrubs, and bushes, which are here. Boom. And this bit here is the water of the river, the canal or the lake or whatever, okay? And then from the horizon line, we're going to have our trees up here as well. So now I'm going to put this water in so as I can cut the trees onto the water and then I'll bring this in front. For the water, just the craft white. It doesn't have to have retarder in it. And doing it this way, I won't get a white ridge against the horizon line. I hate getting those white ridges of paint against the horizon line. So I'm getting all this roughly where the water's going to be. There we go, beautiful. So I've got me orange and I've got some of the blue there. I'm gonna mix that up. And I'm gonna mix it on me brush and keep putting it up there against the painting just to see if I'm getting the right value for the water. All the way along there, all the way along, nice and straight, onto that white paint. See that white paint? It helps this move along your canvas. 
Now you got your, your water there, it's done. Pick up some more of it. If you want to feel you want some bands in there, get some of the darker value and stamp in there like so. And then use this brush to waterfy them. Now I am grabbing a little bit of um, burnt umber in my brush because I do feel I want some, there we go, darker points in there, just like that. I'll wipe that off my brush. I'll waterfy those dark moments in there as well. Oh yeah, look at that. Get them long, long, pull them. There we go, I'm, I'm happy with that. And okay, I've got quite a lot of burnt umber there. I don't need that much. I want to mix up, get that away from there, a lighter value of my burnt umber just for the bottom trees there. That's not dark enough. I'm going to brush mix it until it's the value I want. Getting a bit more. All right. I have it the colour I want. Now I'm grabbing some masking tape just to tape along the horizon line uh, so as I don't get all that paint in the water, which is about there. Now watch how I put this tape on. See where my thumbs are? Get it level. That's where I'm pushing down. That's it. And then I can just tap along the top edge where the paint's going to join it. I don't want to go rubbing the living buggery out of it and pushing it right on there so when I pull it off it's going to pull me paint off. You watch how easy this comes off when it comes time. I have me filbert and I'm just going to use this to map in bits of tree like I want to go about or how high do I want to go that one's going to be about there so this can go about here. I just want tree tops here, air in between them dancing all the way along. I'm going to get pretty much the top area done first, just like so. And then pick it up and then start making it solid. So you've got a, a gradual from where the air is into your solid bit. And just pull that with your tape. You don't want to brush it into the line, you want to brush it along the line, okay, just like that. Now I've given that another coat and just to give it a bit more charisma, I've just grabbed the, the straight burn umber. Oh, I don't want any blobs there. And I'm just going to put some different values in there so it's just not so cheaply done, you know. It doesn't look like a cheap put on in there. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if that tape's going to come off and leave me a nice line I don't have to fix up. Oh, there's a little bit of white there. That's okay. What I'm going to do is get some darker colour on my flat brush because I always like the bit meeting the water darker than the bit up top. And see, I'm just going to gingerly come along with that and then just do a bit at a time and then gingerly scrumble that up into there like that. Simple. So we're going to just do that. You can see the difference what that done, getting rid of that bit of white line. It takes a bit of time and effort to do that, but it's worth the effort. Now I'm having this foreground trees and shrubs here. Uh, I want to get some, oh, it gives me bullshit stick, that gives me nice straight lines. Uh, and I want to get some dark shadows in the, the water to make up for, 
what the palms are going to be because there's going to be some beautiful palms here. So I'm just going to use this. See how I've got scallops there. I'll get my stick and bring it up a bit. Have a bit out here. Just simple burn umber. But they're straight. The stick is keeping them straight. This is pretty much just shadow from when I put my palms in, you'll see what I mean. There we go. Now see this bit here, that's going to be the foreground. I'm running out of perylene green. It's going to be the last painting I'll get out of this tube. I need this down the very bottom. Okay, I've got a flat brush here and pretty much want to get this jingle jangled like that, like that and let it scratch up because I want the bottom of this very dark with this perylene green. I don't want to use black because I find this perylene green puts the perfect darkness for your greens in there. And then I'll gradually put my green colours in. Now see where you can see the white? What I might do is just use this to cover all that up and scratch it up because this is going quite higher than what it is now I'm just getting the brush making their grassy leafy feel marks as I'm pulling it up like that see and if you want to get some out there to highlight just I'm just going to do this now because this will be highlighted And I didn't put the white paint under this bit because it would have broken up. Uh, we can also get some kind of palmy things like this that can be, uh, what do you call it? Highlighted. But this is the dark values that are there to make them what they're supposed to be. Uh, we'll get another one. Whereabouts? There's going to be a palm tree there, there. So I want something pretty much. There we go. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Mm, look at that. I'm just pulling it up any old way, any old way. But try and have thought and conviction in your brush strokes. See this water here? I want to leave bits of that in there as well so we're pretty much coming up there we go look at that wait till we highlight this it's going to turn this snot into bullshit I'll leave that perylene green there I'm grabbing the burnt umber all right and I want it darker so I've got some black there and I want to make a dark value of my burnt umber but I don't want it to be just black and we're going to trunk in our palms onto the canvas so I'm going to have one about here boom so I want him about there he's going to come from about there and he's going to come down into here like that okay we're going to have another one from here I'm just doing the points and his one's going to be about here-ish so in the middle of that circle boom that's where that palm will go and I'm simply going to get with the help of Malcolm just create pretty much a palm trunk coming out like that. I'm doing these now so the highlights can sink them back and it's pretty much, well I, I normally do them a bit thinner at the top and come a bit wider towards the base and get a nice sharp edge along up there. And now this other one is going to go from there. Where do I put his base? He's just, just pretty much a straight one. Bang. Get him the thickness you want. And I think we've got room to put another one a bit taller and higher up. So he can be all the way up here. Boom. See how easy a palm tree is. Practice them on the inside of a cereal packet. Just how to get your shapes, how you would like to 
highlight them and tone them and shadow them. Now I'll give this a bit of a dry. I didn't dry it too much, where is that colour? I've got the brown and that blacky colour there. I've got some grey now and I want to mix just a bit of a value like this, not too loud grey. And I want to grab this brush and I want to kind of find the edge there and pull it around a bit. See, I want it to mix with some of that wet paint still because I don't want this too loud. I'm feeling it's a bit loud. And if it is a bit loud, you just simply grab the darker colour and put it back. You don't want a dark line on the edge, you want to pull it from that line so there's no line on the edge. There we go, Even giving it a second pass is pretty much And that's a subtle highlight, you don't want it really bright. So see the edge there? I want to crisp it on the edge there and kind of pull it around. Let it break. Get on the edge there and pull it around. And if it's not enough, I'll darken it. I mean, if it's too much, I'll darken it. It's mixing, it's sitting down beautifully. And as you can see, they're subtly highlighted, very scratchy highlighted. I went backwards and forwards when the camera was off, just getting them there. It's not, if you've got it real thick and bright, they kind of go cartoony looking. Now I've got three palm trees there. I'm not gonna film me doing the whole darn three because you'll get bored stupids and turn me off. I wanna keep you here. So I'm gonna show you how I do one and then with the magic of TV, the others will be automatically done. And then I want to bring all this to life down below. So I've got the perylene green. I've got a little bit of water. Now, because the perylene green's a bit translucent, I've added a bit of black as well with it to keep it solid. And I want to do a palm. So what I do is come from the center of the, where it is here. And I, I know in my head, I want it about this round, okay? So I pretty much put one there and I'm going to, bring him down and then pull bring him down pull that's it see all the scratchingness there that's fine that's all i need to do you can go into detail and make them more realistic but we're not going for realism here i'm going to get another one down here bang 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 and a little bit torn off there maybe get there you dag there we go now i always like to give him a bit of a scraggler something like that this is just my I, I have my own way of doing a palm so I do them my way and now we can from the middle just solid pull hang on Malcolm's in the way solid pull and scratch see how it's pulling and scratching it's making those palm prongs and that's all I'm going to do something here you don't want them looking like a skinny wagon wheel type. This is all going to be coming forward. The highlights are going to bring stuff in front and behind each other. Okay, so we're going to have lots of stuff. Bang, bang, bang. The wind hits these things and tears them around a bit. A couple there. There we go there. I want to keep it coming out still so I want to get a bit more on my brush I want to get this one out here there we go because I was starting to lose my circle now see the middle I simply just make it busy some points 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 and give it some busyness in there boom just like so so it doesn't look skinny. I probably can do it a bit more up here. There we go, boom. I should have done this one for you because it's near the sun, but another way you can do it is see the top. You can get your flat brush, make your sort of bit of a blob there like so. There we go. Scraggly bit there, scraggly bit there. Bang, that was easy, wasn't it? Now I want to get some of this just Oh, right in front of that sun there, bang. 
Okay. Another one coming down here. Bang, tear it. Okay, we're finished doing that. Now I wanna grab some cadmium yellow and just get some green coming out in that now. So this is gonna turn the headlights on in that perylene green. There we go, that's it. And I just wanna put little bits of this in there because they're in silhouette, so just little bits of this are gonna be coming through the palms. So I've given that black a bit of a dry and I wanna work out, just let's bring one, where are we? Let's bring this one right from the guts and oh, How's that looking? That's okay. It's a little bit loud. I'm just darkening it up a bit. Maybe this one here. I want it scratchy over that black. There we go, just like that. Another bit, see I've got one here coming out of that in front of that stuff. And just little bits here. Whoever buys this painting, which all my paintings are for sale, they will see the luster of all this. So I've got one right in front of that bang. They're set back in silhouette. Now, so you can see that, I'm just gonna dirty the brush in that paint and then start mixing it into this yellow on its own. So it's a way brighter value. And just subtly again, grab Malcolm again if you need him, hold his hand. And I'll get some, of, where are we? Probably want something scratchy there. Scratchy there. This bit here, to put that in front, in front of them, yeah, there little bit there, and I'll come back with the dark, where I feel I've got too many bright colors. So see how I've put bits in front and behind each other? Right in front there, boom. And this one here, bits of subtle green, just subtly there. I will, I'll show you with one of these, just how coming back with the with the dark colour will help it. There we go. Scratchy. I'm not thinking about it much. Now they look a bit oobly obbly, but we'll get the dark colour. Picking up the dark colour, wiping it off, and just sort of get some of that loud green back. Bits in the centre there, bits in front again, where you feel it's a bit too loud. Might put a shadow on the trunk there, not that it should be because the sun's on the other side. Uh, a little bit loud here in it, so we'll, we'll just kind of rescue that. Now with these greens down here, we're picking up this colour that we mixed. This can be a bit inky. And these frongy bits that we made will, will give them some, just over the black bits that you put there. Boom, boom. Come over there like that. Coming from the bottom, I'm trying to create that like, boom grassy look there because we're going to put some vibrant green stuff in front of this again. Now just to finish it off, I've got forest green here, different colour green, some of the cadmium yellow. And we're going to mix up our green here. Now we want this a bit inky as well, not too inky, but enough to transfer off the brush. And we're pretty much, where are we? I'm going to break it open and I want to get some of this in front of that other green there, coming from the dark, in front of the palm tree there, in front of that green, it's kind of like shrubbery bush. If we've killed too much of the darks underneath, don't worry, we can put it back. 
I'll grab some of that, bring over this side. There we go, in front of the trunk there, in front of that. We're sinking stuff backwards and forwards. All there. Now I will sink some of that black back because I feel I've lost. See where this is transitioning at the bottom to the black? It's too much of a <clears throat> There, get that like that. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice and shrubbery kind of stuff. So before I lose it, I'm just going to wipe the paint off that, grab the darker colour, which is still on my palette here, and come from the dark and push it back up. Where are we? The dark and push it back up into that green. So it's a softer transition. And now we'll just simply highlight this. Which is the forest green and the cadmium yellow. Get this. Now I'm just using a flat brush. I want it a bit more brighter than that. And I want to just smash it in the brush like that so I can get some sort of roundy, spotty, tree, leafy type things happening on the highlights. So this is setting these ones back, boom, but down there. Just like that, mainly on the tops, radiating across the tops there. Turning the brush as I go. And some of it will just be subtly filtering down into that dark there as well. So get that green that we put on, not this green. This is this green and just like that. And hopefully, yeah, that's looking like we've got the visuals that I'm after up in front of the tree there, down in some of the black. And I'm just turning the brush like this as I'm stabbing it on. It's quite achievable for a beginner to do. Have some fun practicing work out things, you might discover things you can do that you didn't know you can do and you put them in your painting and when people look at it they're going to go Bull shit, how'd you do that? And you can just say, because well, I practice. A little bit in front of those grasses there. I'm just thinking with what's in the brush I could grab some of that white and we'll mint some of the tips of them up. I'll show you what I mean. It just makes the, the light hitting them. Let's say a bit here, let's just see. See? Bit out here, you're sinking that other green back. Don't go everywhere, don't get carried away and start turning your masterpiece into stuff. You've got to learn to ease up. See, bits down there as well. Oh, that's too white. Goodness me, I've got to make snot out of that. Don't worry about that, I'll show you. I'll just quickly grab that other yellowy green and push it back a bit. There we go. All right, I'll sign this and then we'll whack a frame on it and see how she looks. And I want to use this opportunity to thank everyone who supports my content. I want to thank all my patrons that pledge every month. Without you people here, it makes it that little bit harder for me to do what I'm doing. So you make it a bit easier. Uh, share, like and subscribe. Become a member of my art group, Annapolis Art Network. There's a link below. Say you saw me on YouTube to answer the questions. All right, whack a frame on there. Yeah, that's not too shabby. We've got a river system out in where some pine trees are, some distance there. Beautiful sun saying, g'day, how you going? Lovely day. And you know what? You can do it. And absolutely you can. That was a fun exercise to do. We've got a lot of stuff going on there. It ain't that hard to do with a bit of practice. Tell your friends if you like what I'm doing, but if you don't, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.